I say uh, thank the Lord for being able to be out in his house once again, being able to say that I know that uh, my Savior lives and he gives life and he gives it more abundantly. He's, he's able to save to the uttermost parts of the earth. He's willing to take us in and give us new life if we'll only trust him and obey him. Now this morning, I want to talk about the state of the world today. And, and I hope I can help you realize that this is nothing new. The things that we're going through today is nothing new. The world has been in rebellion since Adam and Eve decided to take the fruit from the tree. The world has been in rebellion. I was a part of the world at one time. You were a part of the world at one time. I was in rebellion at one time. You were also in rebellion one time. But I want you to know, there was a man named Jesus who came from the Father. He came as a lowly babe in a manger. It was a place where they fed the animals. And uh, he grew in the grace of the Lord, and when he came to the time, his appointed time, he came preaching. And I want you to know that he came and he gave us life. He gave us a new look at what life meant to be between us and God. And he didn't only do that, the Bible says he went about doing good, but he, but he laid down his life, a, living, a, a sacrifice upon the cross of Calvary, that we might have life. And trying to make this morning is, is I don't know anybody's heart in here, but everybody that I look upon this morning uh, has uh, made their profession of faith as Christians, but I want you to understand that there's people on our left and on our right that don't know the Lord, that don't know this salvation that the Lord's brought. They are people that live among us and work among us and they're in our own families who uh, absolutely reject the fact that there is a God in heaven that loves us and that wants to save us from our sins. I've been told just this week that, be, you know, I'm a Christian, so that's good for me. But that's good just for me. You know, it doesn't mean that it's good for them. And they're happy that I have found something to believe in, but they don't believe. And I want you to know that the, the, the argument that I make, and it's called apologetics, but the the statement that I'll make to people who do not believe in God is, what if the Bible is true? I believe with all my heart that it is. But when you're speaking to an unbeliever, there's the question that you need to present to them. What if the Scripture is true? What if every word that is said in this Bible is true? Where will that find you on the day of your death? Will it find you saying that you'll just step into nothingness? And that'll be the end, or will you open your eyes and be in torments just as the rich? It's a complete guide. We need everything in it to lead the lost to Jesus. The law was given. Paul said, I had not known what sin was except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. So when the law came, sin revived in me and I died. You tell somebody that they, if they don't accept Christ, they're going to go to hell. They're going to say, What, what for? Why? Why? But if you present them the fact that they are lost because the law says so, then they'll see that they need a remedy. And I want you to see the rebellion in Samuel, 1 Samuel 15. <clears throat> uh, 
I'm going to try to paraphrase a lot of this because it's a big chapter and I want to go to certain verses. Um, I want to go to verse 22, but I want, to, I want to explain to you what's going on. The Lord had told Samuel to tell Saul to go to kill all the Amalekites because they had opposed the children of Israel when they were coming out of Egypt. They were very uh, uh, destructive towards the children of Israel, and the Lord told them to go and to destroy them. He told Saul to go and to destroy them. He said, destroy everything about them. Men, women, children, suckling, the animals, everything. Lay waste to everything. This was the commandment that the Lord had given to Saul. And Saul went, and he did what the Lord said so much. But he left off the goods. He kept the animals, the good animals. Kept them all to himself, and, and he made out like he was going to use that to sacrifice to the Lord. So the Lord spoke to Samuel in, in, in the night and he said, I regret choosing Saul as king of my people. So he commanded Samuel to go up to him. And I want you to go, we're going to go in at verse 22 because i got a few other scriptures I want you to see, but I want you to see this. And we're talking about rebellion today. And the Bible says, and Samuel said, uh, Saul said in verse 20, he says, Saul said unto Samuel, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and have gone the way which the Lord sent me and have brought Agag, the king and the king of the Malachite, and have utterly destroyed the Malachites. But the people took, verse 21, the spoil, sheep, oxen, and chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. They thought they were, he was doing a good thing, but he wasn't obeying the word of the Lord. They are a lot of well-meaning people sitting in the churches today, but they're not obeying what the Lord has commanded to do. And listen to what it says in verse 22. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrificing as he does or as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. That is what's pleasing in the sight of the Lord. Listen, I am not a perfect person. I sin and come short of God's glory. I pray every day that that flesh that, that tries to battle against my spirit, that I would overcome it. Paul said it like this. He said, I die daily. It's a daily thing. How many of you think that you're close to the Lord this morning? It's good that you believe that, but we need to be sure that we secure all of our borders. Because if we allow the devil, devil in at any point, the Bible says in one place, it says it's the little foxes that spoil the vines. It's the little things that we pay no attention to that can come in. It's the little things that brings the root of bitterness it's the little things that, that can cause a stumbling block in our way. Brother Daniel, I'm doing everything I can do to follow the Lord. Keep going. Do it. Be sure of everything, though. And he says like this, Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken that, than the fat of rams. But listen, I want you to see what it says in verse 23. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. There is times in our life that God has called us to do things, to, to do something according to his purpose, and we have not completed it. And I want you to know that they are things that will come. There's, you know, the Bible says in Galatians like this, that we will reap what we sow. If we sow to our flesh, we shall of our flesh reap corruption. But if we sow to the Spirit, everlasting life. How many of you want everlasting life? 
We live in a lost and dying world. We are compassed about on every side. Romans says like this, that if God be for us, who can be against us? But we have to put our faith and trust in Him, not in ourselves. These cults that we were talking about in Sunday school class, they have not put their faith in God. They have put their faith in themselves and the works that they